Hello and welcome to another video. Where's your hair on me? Today we are doing a self-love Q&A from just questions from you guys from my Instagram. If you don't follow my Instagram, you should. Because yeah. We're going to do this with a twist. I'm going to combine my love for positivity, self-care, self-confidence with my love of Legos and we are going to build while we answer some questions. Couple things. If you struggle with anxiety or shutting off your mind, things like that, I highly recommend this. People who have anxiety do well with things where you know the outcome. So watching reruns of shows, you know like every line to or puzzles or Legos because I know what the outcome is. Like I know I'm making these flowers. Very therapeutic for me, so uh, I recommend it. And I know they're expensive. They have like the little $10 sets at Target. Just gonna throw that in there. Second plug, um, if you don't know, I have a podcast with my best friend called Unsolicited Advice. And we have this series we do called October Series. And this year we did some merch to go with it. It has a cute little UA. In the back it says, I swear it's always the boyfriend. Because it always is. They're only on sale for a few more days. So get on it. If you watch this after a few more days, I'm so sorry. Okay, first one. Do you have any self-love practices that have worked for you? Me and my therapist have been working on something that's been helping me a lot lately, and that is working on what I do with negative thoughts. I tend to have a thought and then fixate on it, and then it kind of starts me on just like spirals and stuff. What we do, <laughs> we, it's a team effort. When I have a thought, say for instance, I walk into a room, and I'm having like a really hard day just with like how I view my body and I start feeling myself spiral into something negative, I stop myself. My first question is, is this a true thought? Do you have evidence to prove that this is a true thought? So my thought is, oh my gosh, I'm disgusting. Everyone is staring at me and thinks I'm fat, all this stuff, right? Can I prove that? No, like I can't prove that that's what everyone thinks because I can't read everyone's minds. Also, am I disgusting? No, that's not factual. And then the second thing is, if you don't have the evidence to prove this, then is this having a positive impact on you or is it having a negative impact on you? Obviously, that kind of thought process does not help and it is not positive. Then this is not useful for you to be like focusing on this. So then I let the thought out and then I try to just do active things to get my mind on something else, whether that's, you know, taking a deep breath and like relaxing my body because I a lot of times can tell when I'm anxious when I have tension in my body or, you know, going and grabbing something to drink or going and starting a conversation with a friend, telling myself, like, obviously in my head, like, I love you and you're beautiful. Like, go own this. Like, you got this. I kind of just, like, reset. It's okay if you have to reset every, like, five minutes. That doesn't mean you're, like, failing at something. It means that you have the strength to, like, get up every time you, like, fall back into old habits. That has been really helpful to me lately. How freaking cute are these little daisies? All right, next one. I suffer with severe binge eating and it's super hard to break. Any helpful tips? Um, I feel you and I empathize with you and I'm so sorry. I don't think people really understand like the almost uncontrollable feelings that come with that. I feel like this is becoming just an ad for going to therapy. But again, my therapist was like, you know that when you eat food, it produces like a surge of dopamine, right? That goes to your brain, which is the same effect that drugs have. And it basically is what makes you feel happy. You don't just binge eat when you're bored. You binge eat when you're having an emotional or like this mental response to something. Your brain's gonna like, figure that out, right? And be like, okay, this makes me feel better. So your body's gonna start to crave that feeling, that like quick, easy fix. When I learned that, I was like, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. If I started feeling sad and I started craving food, I would be like, okay, Taryn, like, let's try really hard 
to find something else to give you that surge of happiness. So whether that was going for a drive, rolling my windows down, putting on music that's like nostalgic and makes me feel happy, calling a friend, going to play with my nephew, building a Lego set, like that's been something that like helps me kind of reset and recharge without using food to do that. Next little flower. I'm sorry, but these are so cute. Do you have days where you struggle with loving your body? <laughs> yeah. 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 I think that sometimes we think like, oh my God, are you okay? I'll know I'm good when I don't like hate my body or compare myself and all that stuff. And I feel like there's almost like something super unhealthy about striving for that place we think that we can get. I think confidence and self-worth is so much deeper than what we see on the outside and I think that that is one of the hardest things to learn because we're all looking for a simple fix right and so yes there are days that I wake up and I'm very upset with how I look or my body or the way my clothes are fitting but I think the thing that's made the biggest difference for me is I'm okay with it I'm not striving to fully get rid of that. So when those days come, I simply am just like, ugh, like I feel like crap today. But I also have realized that there's so much more to who I am and my worth than what I physically see or feel. Okay, next question. How do you get over being plus size member of your friend group? <laughs> First, stopping that thought process. Why do you have to be the plus size person in a friendship? You would never like categorize, oh, she's the one with the small shoe size in the friend. Oh, she's the one with an O blood type. Like our society has put so much focus on our bodies. Why do people have to be either skinny or fat? Like why can't people just be who they are? So I think first I would really work on that mentality. I would just find different ways to like see like what you bring to the friend group. Like, yeah, I might, physically be bigger than my friends, but I also am like really funny. I'm loving, I am the person that a lot of people come to when they have something they need to talk about. Like those are all great things that I feel like should be identified as who I am in that friend group. Not the fact that like I'm bigger than most people, if that makes sense. We got some stems now. I'm terrified to do therapy because I can't understand how therapists actually care. Woo! Really just getting into it. All right, I... People don't go into therapy unless they have one of two or both things. A fascination for people and how they work or two, an innate desire to wanna to help people. Either way, if you look at it, it's their job. They are not judging you on what you say. They're not disinterested or just like trying to get through the day. Like the reflection of them professionally has to do with how you do and if you show improvement. So I think like if you think about it that way, like they're invested in you and your growth. Not every therapist is the same and it's okay to like try out a bunch until you find someone that fits. She's complete. If I had to choose something that the majority of people express, it was stretch marks. Any of that kind of stuff that is just like straight up like part of like our human anatomy, whether that's like stretch marks, acne, body hair, it's natural. It's a part of who we are. And I think if we weren't meant to have it, like we wouldn't. We all like have our own thing we're struggling with. The thing that helped the most, I just kind of accepted them. Do I love that I have them? No. 
Can I do anything about it right now? No. Is that something that's gonna deter me from being loved by someone? No, not the right person anyways. And it's a sign that my body is doing what it's meant to do. Like what would happen if like we started to gain weight and we just like exploded? I try to be like really loving in the way that like I look at them. And that doesn't mean if like someone walked in while I was changing and saw my stomach, like I wouldn't tense up a little bit. I just accept the fact that they're there and I'm thankful that like I have the body that I have. The more that I focus on like learning to love myself and my body, the more that like stuff like that doesn't phase me. Look at these colors. Okay, I think this is my favorite one so far. How do you deal with people making comments about your body? What? If it's not your body, it's not your business. I think that there's multiple ways to approach this. I can't control if someone like says something stupid about my body. I don't have to let that take residence in like how I view myself or the way that I think about myself. If people take the time to tear you and your body down, that is more of a reflection of the ugliness that they have inside them and the struggles that they're dealing with themselves. Moveon.com, like there's no point getting an argument arguments and getting in conversations with people who like have such a shallow view. If you want to shut them down harshly and just be like, do you feel better now that you just said that about my body? Like, do you feel like you accomplished what you set out to and be sassy? Or you can just move on past it and like go on with your life. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is how you view yourself. Everyone else can um, suck a fat toe. Look at these cute little pine things. Next question got me a little bit. <laughs> How do I stop hating myself? It breaks my heart so much. I'm sad for you who wrote this question in. I'm sad for everyone who is currently feeling like that or has felt that. It's not a good feeling at all and it's a very helpless place to be. And to answer that, baby girl, you love yourself. And it's not an easy feat. It's not something where you just wake up one day and it's different, like it takes dedication it takes a lot of failing and a lot of getting back up and trying again. Self-love is not any different than how you love other people. Like love is something that's universal. When my friend is having a hard day, I love them by doing something special for them that I know makes them feel better and being there for them and reminding them who they are when they forget. When I love a guy, like I show them my love with my words of affirmation with taking them on dates, giving them just dedicated time to like reinforce how I feel about them. And when you're trying to love yourself, you need to do the same thing. You need to fall in love with who you are. You need to date yourself. When you're having a bad day, like give yourself a pep talk, remind yourself who you are and do things that make you feel good. We need to start treating ourselves the way that we would treat our friends. If your friend came to you and said, I feel fat and disgusting, you would not say back to them, you are fat and disgusting. Like, absolutely not. So why, when you're feeling disgusting or unloved, would you return that thought with, yeah, you are, I hate you, I hate myself? No, you should be talking to yourself and reminding yourself you are worthy of love, you're worthy of feeling beautiful in your own skin, and you're worthy of being happy. Talk to yourself, invest in yourself in ways to show yourself that you love yourself and you're worthy of that love. I'm gonna finish these up real quick and then we will freaking wrap this video up. Okay, y'all, these are freaking beautiful. When I die, bury me with Lego flowers, please. It's so pretty. Thank you for joining me for this video. I love you guys, I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see ya in another video. One more look. Bye.